Augustana. I'm Pastor Intern Michael Poschel. Thank you for joining me as we look at our Engage and Reflect on the sermon for this upcoming Sunday. We're looking at Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. Please listen as I read these verses, and you're welcome to follow along. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Before getting right into the text, it's interesting to get a little context beginning in chapter 12 when Abram gets his first call from God about taking his family and moving, that he will be a blessing for so many generations to come. Without getting into all those details, I encourage you to read those chapters 12, 13, and 14 for a little extra insight into understanding Genesis 15. Another important part of this is the names Abram and Sarai, and remembering that it isn't until Genesis 17 that God renames them Abraham and Sarah. So in these readings, Abram and Sarai are our main characters. In verse 1 of chapter 15, we have what's known in a little bit of research as a first occurrence of the Bible. And one of these is the after these things, the word of the Lord came. And that is that example of God living amongst us, God in direct contact with us. And with that invitation, God comes across with his love and care of do not be afraid. Abraham has been traveling. He's put his trust in God, and he's taking care of a number of people. And in this case, do not be afraid is also a clue that some good news is going to show up. Anytime in the Bible when it starts out as a woe or something like that, the news that follows isn't usually that good. Another interesting aspect I found is that God seems to be aware that something is bothering Abraham. And what we find out is it's that promise that he hasn't been there and following through. And that's where we get into verse 2 with Abraham responding with his lament, what really hurts deep inside. Oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is my servant. He doesn't have anyone to pass on anything if he doesn't have a son. That was the tradition back then. The fact that it would be a servant, there was a vehicle for that to happen at that time. But knowing that God had made this promise, Abram really wants to find out what that is, to kind of remind God what that promise was. So in verse 3, Abraham kind of restates the problem, and he kind of checks in with that. Abraham said, You have given me no offspring, and so the slave of my house is my heir? Obviously, God is aware of that, but again, it's this learning, it's that connection. And here in verse 4, we have another occurrence of, but the word of the Lord came to him. God is speaking directly to Abraham. It's a very unique and special way that God over the generations has selected certain people to speak directly with. 
And God then renews this promise with Abram. And in a rather miraculous and exciting way, in verse 5, he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars. Almost like he knew what the answer was going to be, if you are able to count them. Then he said, And so, so shall your descendants be. If you can imagine Abraham and God standing right next to each other, that trust they have, trusting in God, and God revealing this through Abraham in his word. That's that same trust that we look for, that we have this personal connection and relationship with God. And in our last verse for this reading, we have what comes to be one of the fundamental pieces of both Christianity and the traditions supported by Abraham. We have the fact that he believed the Lord. That's all it takes. And the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. It's that idea that the Apostle Paul writes about. It's what we as Lutherans understand as being justified by grace through faith, faith alone. We have only to listen to God's word and we are justified. And with that, the possibility that God has for us that we might not even know comes true for Abraham, Abram, and his wife when they do have a child even later. And that is the promise that we all have. I ask you to please pray with me. God, you declared Abraham righteous by his faith. We hear your promises and share your abundant love in complete faith. We trust you. Even when our faith is challenged, you are here with us. Through Jesus Christ, we believe the good news and thank you for this blessing. Amen. I encourage you to reread and read this text and look forward to you listening to my sermon. Thank you.